Mic check, one, two. Omani Armah here, AKA D Mike, AKA Mr. Read a Book, AKA the Hip Hop LeVar Burton, AKA Darius Love Hall, AKA the Black Colin Powell, AKA the Watermelon Man. Thank you very much for tuning into this video. Today, this is my theme. We don't need another hero. I'm quoting uh, Tina Turner all day long on that joint. Here's the thing, there are no black leaders, okay? Anytime Al Sharpton and Cornell West have a dust up online, that does not count as a Royal Rumble between black leadership because there is no black leader, okay? We do not need another leader. We're not looking for another leader. This stuff happened like a month ago and we're still talking about it all over the place on CNN and MSNBC and I'm a frequent uh, reader of TheRoot.com and they are still talking about this dust up between Cornell West and people who are supporters of Barack Obama. The really radical things that black people need to be on the ground marching for aren't the stuff that mainstream networks want to cover anyway when it comes to the prison industrial complex, when it comes to the HIV and AIDS rate, that kind of stuff that gets lip service and then nothing else because they don't really want to talk that in depth about it and that's what people are trying to organize around. Cornell West having a problem with Al Sharpton is not a leadership crisis, okay? Cornell West does not have any followers. And this is not even a diss for Cornell West. Cornell West has fans, he has readers, he has admirers, but he has no public cry for public action that black people have ever responded to. Um, I don't think that's the role he wants to play. So we need to stop thinking that this is a crisis in leadership when he has issues A with Al Sharpton, B with Barack Obama. Because another thing is, Barack Obama is not a black leader. Barack Obama is the first black president. Young people have been looking for the black liberator and the black president. And I never expected the two of them to be the same. And I think just like everyone else, we expected the black liberator to come before the black president, um, which is a shock to everyone, especially a shock to people, um, the elder state statesmen of black liberation, like Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton and Cornel West, the people with cam the people that cameras come to all the time to ask them what's going on with black people. I'm pretty sure that all of them thought they would never see this day when we would have a black president. Or if they did see this day, the black president would have to come through them somehow. But the black president completely skipped over them and that has left them for a loop. They don't know how to react to this. I mean, you know Jesse Jackson thought that if he wasn't the black messiah politically, that at least he was the black John the Baptist. And Barack Obama had nothing to do with him and that's, some, that's reality that none of these elder statesmen thought they would have to deal with and they're having problems with it now. A, it's quite all right to criticize black leadership. B, the people who are being criticized aren't really black leadership anyway. They're national leaders or they're pundits, okay? No one's following any of the movements that these people have. And then on top of that, I agree with what Cornell West says as far as criticizing Barack Obama. Um, he called him a black puppet of the oligarchs and a mascot of the plutocracy. Um, I have a pro I have pro problem with absolutely nothing he said except for the black part. The mascot part is fine, but bringing his ethnicity into it was pointless. The president of the United States is always the mascot for the capitalist imperialistic system. That's That should be part of their subtitle. It should say, Barack Obama, president of the United States, puppet of the oligarchy, mascot of the plutocracy. That's always been the president's job. Where Cornell West stepped out of bound was making it a black issue. Like he expected the first black president to be pro-black no, he's just black and the president. Like I said, the confusion is they thought the black liberator would come first. They thought black people would have figured out poverty and figured out AIDS and figured out education and figured out our relationships and figured out the crime and the drugs. They figured a black leader would have all that and then either that person or the next person after that would have become the black presidency. But we skipped right over that part, right to the black president and they're all completely confused as to how to react to this situation. The president of the United States needs to be critiqued at every turn, as often as possible, whenever he steps out of bounds, whenever he's not doing the will of the people. That is the history of America. The history of America is not the great founding fathers. The founding fathers were racist and assholes, all right? They were capitalists who sent poor people to die over their taxes. Most of them, and I'll give some of the framers credit, some of the framers had an idea of the country that we have become, but the most of the founders George Washington would not look at Barack Obama and say, wow, my dream has been fulfilled. He would look at Barack Obama and say, why hasn't anyone beaten this Negro within the inch of his life? Does he have the nerve to talk to me like I'm his equal? That would have been George Washington's um, idea. The thing is, in the Constitution, in the Declaration of Independence, they put in stuff about all men being created equal. 
uh, God-given rights, inalienable rights. These are things that most of the founders, the majority of the founders did not believe, okay? What they did was they wrote a piece of propaganda that they did not quite believe, but you can't send other poor people to die over the rallying cry, I hate the tax rate on tea. Like, no one gets amped up over that. No one's gonna do that whole musket loading thing that takes a minute to do and you might get shot in the head while you're doing it. No one's gonna do that over that. You have to fight over inalienable rights, over God-given rights, over equality. So they wrote some propaganda that they never expected people to follow up on. What makes this country great is not that document. It's not the leaders who formed that document. It's the fact that after they wrote those documents, the minorities, everyone they weren't referring to, the women, the people of color, the poor people, all of them spent the next 250 years calling them out on bullshit, saying your document, this holy piece of paper that you hold right next to the Ten Commandments and the rest of the Bible, this holy piece of paper that founded this country says that I have the right to do this, I am supposed to have that, that democracy will reign, that people will be looked after, that the pursuit of happiness will not be infringed on by my government. People criticizing and attacking the government is what makes this government great. And just because the first black person becomes president does not give us the right to stop making the country great by criticizing it. Because the critics of this country are what's make the country great, not the founders. So if you want to criticize the president, go ahead. It's completely within your rights and it's your patriotic political duty, okay? But do not come at the president on some personal stuff. Like, Cornel West seems to be mad that he didn't get an invitation to the inauguration. He seems to be mad that President um, Obama dressed him down at some conference that he's referred to. Look, I'm hoping Cornel West does not have such a large ego that he's conflating Barack Obama not liking him with Barack Obama not liking black people. Because that's really what it looks like at this point. It seems like Barack doesn't like him. And I'm okay with Barack not liking him. But when Cornel West brings up points about poor people, about inequalities in this country, he should. He should stay away from that, that silly psychoanalysis babble about Barack Obama's Afrocentricity, him growing up with white people, stuff like that. Like, that's ridiculous. A, we've already known this. So why are you bringing this up like it's news, okay? That was part of the story of why he would be the first black president. Because he can... He can relate to white culture, but he is very much a minority. And B, that's, that, I mean, it sounds like some stuff Newt Gingrich would say, honestly. Newt Gingrich right now is calling him the welfare president. He's saying he's going to make the country look like Detroit. And just stay away from that, all right? Make legitimate complaints. The problem is Cornel West has been crowned the leader by, of black people by television. And television is not listening to his critiques unless his critiques get racial. And so in a cry for the camera, he's saying these ridiculous things that need to be left off the table. For the record, the first black president was never going to be the black liberator. African Americans, no matter who has been trying to buck the system, whether it be Nat Turner or Denmark Vesey or, or Marcus Garvey or Malcolm X, those people have been minimalized and marginalized. This country has never been okay with black liberation. They've always been okay with black assimilation. And a lot of black people have been okay with black assimilation. And I don't know if I have an argument against black assimilation but we need to understand everything that entails okay black history month if you look at black history month the way i remember black history month in school it's always talking about the first black person to do something white people have always done all right that includes absolutely everything it hasn't been the people who buck the trend they only talk about marcus garvey and nat turner and malcolm x because the ripple they made in history is so large that you can't ignore them but the people that black historians love and that the united states love are the people who fought hard to assimilate us into the culture frederick Douglass, du bois carver um martin luther king people like that all right and not a diss at all to them you know what i'm saying they they were necessary and they were courageous but Assimilation has always been the path that black people have taken. And so any idea that Cornel West wants Barack Obama to battle poverty to now battle imperialism and capitalism is completely unrealistic. That would never happen. Why would you vote the president of a capitalist empire and expect him to try to bring down the capitalist empire? All right. Now, the people who used to be for assimilation and then became more of a straight up rebel are people like Dr. Martin Luther King, the minute he merged the fight against racism with the fight against poverty and capitalism, that seems to be the exact time that they put a big crosshair on his chest and he died. So black leaders are staying away from that as much as possible, at least 
organizing feet on the ground. You can be a pundit with that all day, but don't try to organize people around that or something's gonna happen to your ass. So Cornell West, for the rest of you black critics, please continue to criticize Barack Obama. Please continue to criticize Barack Obama. That is our jobs as patriots, but stay away from the racial stuff because that's unrealistic. Barack Obama has already done for me the only thing I needed him to do. As an educator, when I go talk to these young kids, when I talk to a young 11 year old boy who has no father, who comes from a community that does not see his potential, and I tell him that if he wants to be, he can be president, he believes me now. He doesn't think I'm blowing smoke up his ass. And I will always thank Barack Obama for that. Thank you very much, Barack Obama. I will always thank you for that, and I will still at the same time be calling you out on your bullshit. Peace.